Good morning, good morning, good morning. AM Hustle once again. I get this question all the time. I am not a financial advisor, but it happens. Hey, Glendon, how much money should I invest? Where should I invest? Should I invest in a 401k? Should I start my business? What should I do? Where should I put my money? You know what? I'm going to let you know what I think about all of that in just a minute. But if you're interested in building something, creating something, check out Hustler Mindset Life Skills. The information is below the video and in the annotations of the video or that little magical eye that you see on the screen when you put your finger on your mobile device or you move your cursor over the video. And with that, let's, let's just jump into this. Let's just really jump into it. All right. Should you, you, go ahead, build a business or invest in your 401k, or as I like to say, pimp it out. I'm going to give you my trajectory and my experience and take from it what you will. When I was investing heavily, I noticed something. I would, I was doing really well because I was living on 50% of my income at the time. When I was really into the investment thing, really maximized, I was like living on 50% of your income, invest the rest. And I got to a very nice portfolio, which I did have to liquidate to pay off a large fucking loan, big ass loan. But as I went back and I looked at what is it, the reason my portfolio was doing so well wasn't because it was a appreciating it was from contributions you should really note that because you know it'll give you the breakdown of you know the principle what you put in and what's appreciated now i will say there are financial geniuses out there there are people who will start investing in the stock market today and five years from now they will have a million or two or three or in some cases two or four million it happens me i'm not comfortable with it don't like it. Uh, I like lost all of the interest, didn't lose the principal in a downturn. And then I got a little bit, little bit, ah, I got a little bit of it back. I, right, for me, I don't like it. If there's some of you out there who are really comfortable, you want to do your 401k, knock yourself out. I did it. I'm on a different path. Now, once again, sharing my experience with you and what I'm doing. I believe in what's called the perpetual business. We live in an age, and I'll tell you how I got here. It was, I, I've experienced retirement before. I wrote my first book. Many, many great things happened. Many of you were part of those great things because you bought the book, you bought the courses, so thanks. I got to experience what a retired person feels like, where you could do what you want, and every, you know, in my case, because I was using two checkout, I got paid every Friday, whether I did anything or not. This went on for about two years. Didn't matter if I put up a video because the thing is, the machine was built. So no matter what I did, <laughs> money came in. And unlike in retirement, my income appreciated at points. Because I wake up and I was like, "Ooh, what happened? <laughs> this is nice. And I knew it wasn't going to last forever, so I made the most of it. I was able to be there for close people, close friend, help people, illness. And so it was a good thing in my semi-retirement. I don't like retirement per just sit down, do nothing. It, I've been there. I know what it feels like. And that type of retirement isn't for me. It may be for you. It's great. It's wonderful. It's not for me. I don't want that. So back to the perpetual business. That book taught me something. I spent a lot of time on writing that book, promoting that book, pushing it. And then, and this is why when I say it's cool that life is unfair, it's also it's amazing that life is unfair. Because for me to work on that book from July, well, actually, I didn't start the storage auction book until a little later. Just let's say my publishing business thing, July 17th through October 6th. So that's when the book was, the first version was done and I started putting it out for sale. And let's extend that period from July 17th to December of 2009. And a few months after that, I was making a livable income. That's not fair. That's not fair at all. That's wonderful, but it's not fair. 
Because for me to put in literally six months of work, do some other stuff, and create this machine that gives me money for years is not fair. That's why I say fuck fair. I don't care about fair. I don't even dwell on it because if it was fair, that never would have happened to me on the positive side. Just like something can happen to you on the negative side. You're not going to experience the unfairness of positivity if there's such a thing. And I just looked at that from being a resale guy, from selling stuff, from investing a lot of money, from borrowing a shitload of money, from being in massive debt to not being able to sleep at night because I don't know if I was going to be able to make payroll and pay bills. I was just like, whoa, this is a better way for me. This is cool. I can sit down and do this and make videos and put my essence and contribute to the world, put this stuff out there, and people pay me? Oh, I can do this shit too. I'm 80, 90, 100, 105. Shoot, have the bionic heart, whatever. So for me, perpetual business. I plan on working the rest of my life because... I choose my work. I choose what I get to do. I choose where I work. I choose, well, I recently turned down a contract with a fool. I said, keep your money. You offered me $10,000. But at that $10,000, I would have had to put on a dress and red heels and walk the streets for a few hours each night. I was like, this is not for the kid. With good luck, hopefully you find someone that will help service you for your wants and needs and desires because I'm not doing this. And that that's just really... I can't tell you how amazing it is that when someone can throw something like that at you and you just, you don't even look at the money. Okay. I'm not a financial planner. I will tell you what I did and we can go from there. I think that should be helpful. You can look at my journey. I'll give you what I used to do and what I'm currently doing because I believe in a perpetual business. And something that's relatively new in my life. And I'll, I'll break that down a little further. Let's go way back when, when I was saving 50% of my income. I used to be into the investment thing, deep and heavy. And I noticed that when I took away my contributions, because you know my portfolio was growing. And there, it wasn't appreciating. It was growing from contributions. It wasn't appreciating. Appreciation is... I buy a storage unit for a hundred bucks. I sell it for fifteen hundred. That's appreciation. Appreciation isn't when I put fifty thousand dollars into an account and at the end of the year it's fifty two thousand. That's yeah. You made a little money, but time. And if you go, let's just give you this. There are people out here who are going. There's someone who's going to start investing today. They've invested before. And 12 months from now, 24 months from now, they're going to have a million dollar portfolio and they've earned it because they found some quirk or some angle in the stock market the, or they did their research. You can make a ton of money. The capital markets are one of the reasons that the United States exists. But personally, it's not for me. I have no holdings in the stock market, no position in the stock, nothing. Zilch, zero. I'll tell you why. Going back to when I noticed that the reason my portfolio was growing was because of my contributions and my income. It wasn't appreciating. And I started to really, the fog kind of left my eyes and I was like, wait a minute. I, the way this shit's going, I really don't need them. So I had to pay a really big, big loan back, which I did in my position. In the time in stock, I had some stuff, but pretty much got rid of it. So, let me give you a concept here. If you make $35,000 a year, every year, you get a quarter of a year, you put $5,000 away, diligently for 30 years. You really hit all of the metrics because a lot of you see in those perspectives, you never hit those numbers. <laughs> it's just not. It's not happening. If you hit them, you may even exceed them, but they're going to go back down to low. You might be at five hundred thousand dollars your whole life, which is better than nothing. I'm not going to disparage that and say no, but 
All right. So you go ahead and you start this business, family business. You bring your kids in, uncle, brother, you get everybody in. And uh, say so the business costs 50000 to start. And over the years, you put more money in. And here, year 30, that business is making, you know, $8 million a year. You don't have to work. All your money is paid from the business. Your fam's running the business. You doing whatever the fuck you want to do. I started looking at those stories versus the quote investor stories because all were successful business people first. And I will recommend you know all his old book. Those movement tactics were created in a market when people were more fair, more equitable. You know, the market was moral, if there is such a thing. If that's what you want to do. But I looked at one of my landlords and he had a lot of money because he had built a business. It, his his money didn't come from investing. It came from building and creating. And I just keep going. I kept going back and I started meeting these people. And then I'll meet this guy who had this great portfolio. And what happened was he had an exit strategy. So this company got 20 mil, <laughs> paid us taxes and then took 10 mil and threw it in the market. I've also heard many stories where these people have lost every damn dime after working a lifetime of building a business properly and throwing it in the market because that is the conventional wisdom and lose every life is on. It's awesome. That life's not there. I worked my publishing career. My all the wrong stuff. If life was fair, that would have happened. That's what I love life. Fair. And I was with a dear friend, my dear friend who was uh, uh, battling cancer because when that thing caught on, I got to experience the life of a retired person. I didn't have to. I had to experience it. And I'm going to tell you, I would have to every month. I've got money coming in on your shit. Spies going to the store and stuff on the weekends. I hate it. It's, if I do it, it's rare because I have to because I'm spoiled. I go to the bank. There's nobody there. I go to the store. There's nobody there except the soccer moms and the elderly. It's awesome. And they're real cool, too, because you start to see the regulars and they're like, hey, how are you doing? I'm going to be funny. What the fuck do you do that you're home in the middle of the day? You sweet back, you. So I got to experience all that. And it's just not for me. Hence the perpetual business, which was brought about from the book experience. Going through that experience and seeing a better way to make money. Uh, there, there's a lot of people who are here for because I'll just say it. I was a critical part of starting the resale community, which invariably a lot of those motherfuckers hate my ass now because I would not give information because I didn't have to give my information to make money. I didn't have to give my information to make friends because I'm that kind of guy. I was pivotal in starting that shit. And I looked at it and I moved away from that because of having years of experience of being in debt and years of experience of spending a lot of money. And then got to the point where I was spending money and making money, but spending money. But there was always this spending money, spending money, holding money, borrowing money, having money locked up because the containers coming from China, you know, 60, 80 grand, just dead money. Can't do anything with it, but you have to or using factoring. It's very stressful. It's real stressful. It's a crazy stressful. I had nights I couldn't sleep because I know I was going to make payroll. I'm looking in the bank account. Ain't nothing in there but 20 cents. Went through those days. And then got past that and was doing okay. And then I, I learned this new trick. And then learned this, this new thing that I could use my creativity, my IP, intellectual property, make money from home for real. And it's just a matter of me scaling that up, what I did the first time. Now, with that said, the first book was the, the shit. Home run, grand slam, all that. Uh, the, the other books, they all, collectively, they didn't do as well as the first book. 
So I'm still trying to recreate that magic, which is one of the reasons I'm constantly experimenting, uh, testing stuff out. And, you know, this is, brings me to the perpetual business versus investing, because like I said, very few people hit those numbers. The average investor, if they're lucky, breaks even. It's just, it's just for me, it's, it's not for me. I'm not, you know, like I said, there's people making a ton of money. And one of the reasons I have no positions is for, you know, the perpetual business going back to the book. And I know that with the way the world is working, the entry point for me is now is, is now because we're heading to, all right, I'm going to give you a few things and, and I'll get into the whole investing thing in a minute. Technology is making the world smaller and language is not going to be the barrier that it's been for a long time. And someone's going to create the app. I don't know who someone's going to create this app where it's going to interpret and not only interpret, but interpret perfectly or elegantly exactly the nuances and everything. Uh, it'll be maybe like a reader or some that you have this text, put your reader on it. It's going to give you everything you need and you can rock and roll. So those who are in the communication industries, those who are writers, those who are authors, those who create movies, those who create artwork, photo it's just the communicators, the people who can do visual communication or tech. It's just, you're going to have a writer who's going to write a book and become a billionaire in a year. You know, everyone's like JK Rowling. You're going to have a writer who's going to write this amazing book. And because of the distribution, uh, the distribution system is going to be worldwide. They're going to put it out reviews and in, in Spain, they're going to love it. They're going to love it in Portugal. They're going to love it in the Senegal. They're going to love it in Cameroon. And this book is just going to go everywhere. And all of these billions of people are going to be reading this book just like that. That's coming. And it's going to be in our lifetime. And I have a shot at hitting that or being part of that. And that's one of the reasons I left resale, because this is another thing from building a business. The first few years are often rocky or not as great as you want. It's just a matter of you keep hitting it. So and I see it. Everything that I predicted about Amazon, I had people arguing me up and down in the group that, oh, I said, they're going to lower author's income because they're a business and their primary goal is to serve their shareholders and their self-interest, not you. Not mad at them. That's just the way it is. And boom, it happened. <laughs> you know, people are like, oh, I lost 75% of my income. My income was cut in half. And I talked to some people in the group and they, you know, one of them said, you were right. She said, I thought you were crazy. I just thought you were jealous because, you know, I went to Amazon and saw that, you know, you only had a few books. I did not know that you were selling most of your books through your own platform. I did not have a clue, but I'm going with my intuition based upon my research, based upon what the future is bringing. I put out, you know, years ago, the first thing that was going to happen was you would see the driverless semi trucks because it's a business equation that's pushing that permitted, uh, driverless truck you know there's a driver in there but we're going to see just like minority report there's going to be a truck rolling by you and there's going to be a, a robot driving it you're going to see that in your lifetime and it's really really just amazing what's going to happen and that's what i'm betting my future on because i believe in this so strongly so that's why i'm not in the stock market or in this stuff and many people's like oh that's just foolish you need something to have fall back on um uh, i'm going to use my homeless experience that is absolutely one of the worst thing that's ever happened to me in my life. And it was prolonged. It went on for years. Homeless, living in a boarding house, living around crazy people, living around dysfunctional people, living around people who have psychotic issues. That was my reality. So if I can deal with that shit, I don't need a fallback plan. <laughs> that's in my mind. I'm just like, okay, I dealt with that shit. I don't need a fallback plan or just in case and all this other stuff. Because once again, uh, just some things that I know and see that I don't really need that because I've built some things. And that that's why. And that's why, you know, when I get these investment questions, uh, you know, you're not going to make any money unless you have money with investing. That's one thing I do know that's true. You got to have some money to invest to make some money with investing. And you need to have a chunk of money. You're not going to do this with, a, you know, like resale. You could invest, you can spin your weapon. You could take 500 bucks in resale and flip your way to six figures you could do that in resale that same 500 dollars 
and try to flip your way to six figures in the stock market will take probably eight times as long or maybe 10 times as long if you do it. Maybe 20 times as long because you take fire and bucks and flip hard and you hit that stuff like a ninja. You can do that in a year. I, I don't know too many people starting with 500 bucks and flipping that into a million or six figures in a year in the stock market. I've seen people take 100,000 and end up in here with 500 bucks because it took a downturn. I've seen that quite a bit. Now, let, let's get into the investing in a 401k and or starting the business. If you are not really motivated, if you don't have a lot of get up and go about yourself, go ahead and invest in 401k. Just go ahead, do it. It's better to have something than nothing because if you're not rough, rugged, ready, and just about getting it, you you will be better served by following that traditional path because you just, boo-boo, you just don't have what it takes. Straight up, you just don't have what it takes. And you may know this already, so put your money where you need to put it, get you some good uh, portfolio diversification, and work on your side business perpetually. That's where I'm at 2015 because I've seen too many people. I've had a lot of students and I can just kind of, but based on your questions, you got to tell where you're going to end up because you're asking the wrong questions. You're asking questions that if you applied any level of diligence, you would already know the answer because they're like all over the place. And that's something else I learned from, you know, doing these courses and talking to you and teaching people and training people is I had a lot of folks and don't take this the wrong way, who are neophytes, they're rookies, they're in, you're in business kindergarten. If you're asking me how to get a domain name, if you're asking me, well, where do I go if I don't sell on Amazon or eBay? Uh, duh. You get a domain and you open up your own shop. And you're asking me those questions. See, the real question is, and I'll, I'll just even tell you that, that's why I don't even deal with how to start a blog or all those other things, because it's so easy. And I recently put out an offer on my private list that a lot of people took advantage of, and it's called Traffic School. That's something that you'll hear about in the future. Because what I'm learning to do in, in my evolution as, for the perpetual business is to take small teams of people and work out all the kinks, but to take dedicated people, people who want to do something, and really give them great and awesome service and personal uh, access to me and build out a great product. And that's what I've been doing and it's starting to really, really work well. So if you want to be part of that, go below the video and get on one of the email lists. And also, I've, I've gotten to the point, like there's one list, the main list, the digest, that's the one that everybody gets everything. Special offers are on the niche list. The uh, online video, the pathology media, hustle mind. Yeah, those, those lists get the better stuff, just saying. And Talking to people and looking at this, it's just I'm, I'm in a real different place with this entrepreneur hustler thing because I was put in a position where I had to either hustle or die. That's pretty much what it was. And when I say die, I'm not talking about when I say hustle, I'm not talking about selling drugs or anything, because the minute you say that you have people who are intellectually lazy that that make that leap because really critical thinking cramps their brain and causes a shutdown. But. I was in a position. It was either do that or die or just perish. And when I say die, be, you know, my age, 48, living in some hovel, working some job I hate and just elking out an existence every day. To me, that's death. And that's where I would have been if I didn't hustle. I would have been okay. I would have ate and I would have recovered and I would have had some place to stay. I probably would have met somebody, got married and had one of those lives that I was really been unsatisfied with. If you ever watched the house of cards, there was a scene in the first season where Claire visits their uh, agent who got shot. No, he had cancer. And, you know, he just professed how much he thought she was such a woman. And he didn't know that Claire was not just Claire was Claire was a motherfucker. Claire Underwood's a motherfucker. Love her to death. And, you know, she's professing he wants. She, she goes ahead and gives him a hand job. And she just says, hey, Francis told me he didn't promise me a rose garden. But he also said, if you're with me, it'll never be boring. And she kept his word. And she's like, he, he kept his word. And that, that's the thing for me. Uh, things that other people want, 
It's boring to me. I don't really want that. You know, there's just certain things. I mean, if you check out my Tumblr blog, you'll see that I'm a really odd dude. It's just those regular things that just don't appeal to me. And that's why when I put this stuff together and I bring you this and I bring you the psychology and I bring you the top of the game and the bottom of the game and I look at current events, all that comes from my odd view of looking at the world. And that's why I'm doing this stuff. And that's why I'm training and teaching people differently, because if you want to invest in a 401k and you, you know that you're lazy, you know that you're unmotivated, you know you're going to need someone to help you and just go ahead and pay those and just go to, I guess, uh, Fidelity and get the no load deal, because this is something I found out a long time ago. You still got people investing in these funds that when you do the math because of the load, they take 60 to 70% of your gains. You're never going to get ahead that way. You never. And this is something that if you just sit down, because there's what your broker's going to tell you, and then that's what the forums are going to tell you. You're going to get better information from YouTube, uh, the blogs, and the forums of other investors who's like, no, 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 don't do that. Because they're doing it and they're winning. And they're going to, like, you'll hear stuff. Uh, give you a great example, like Susie Arman. There's what she tells you, and there's what she does. And they're not mutual, they're not the same. <laughs> not the same. A lot of people who are telling the stock market stuff and don't own any stocks. Uh, some of the richest people I know do not have any stocks or bonds. None. Zilch. And that's another fallacy because typically, and I, I had someone reach out to me here on YouTube who's a business owner, and he experienced an exit event. And he got, he said, I got $3 million. I don't know what the hell to do because he was married. And it's like, everyone's like put in the stock. market. I said, let me tell you what happened to me with the stock market. I didn't lose my ass, but, and I talked to him and I said, what do you got? You've paid your taxes. And he said, you know, it's 3.6 million taxes for pay. I would go out and it's just me to you. And I would find an apartment building in the best part of town. You would get the or, you know, near a, a university, you find you go for the best uh, apartment that you can find near a university that is perpetual income. And let's say university shuts down. It's just going to go on and on and on. So he he listened to me and he was married and his wife didn't want to do it. She wanted to get in the stocks and bonds. She wanted to see the money. And he held fast and he got himself up. Uh, actually had to put some more money with it because it was such a good deal. He actually took a small mortgage on it. And he called me and I was like, that's cool. You could pay that off in a year. You got money coming in that you can live on and then pay that off. And that circus cash cow after you get it paid off. And that's what he did. And um, we've talked, you know, we're kind of friends. And it's like, it's worked out wonderful for him. And he doesn't own any stocks. He's got this multi-unit property that pays him cash money every month. Every month. After taxes and other stuff. I mean, we're still talking close to seven figures. Still close to seven figures because he made some improvements and stuff. And it, this that's that's the whole deal because you are going to have a better chance as a business owner, and you could fail and you'll never hit these metrics. It, it, that's just reality. It could happen, it can never happen. Uh bad things happen. You may never ever get to a point where you can have that kind of exit strategy from your business. That's reality. And you you may be better off investing on 401k or, you know, learning how to day trade or something, you might be better off because I can tell you from experience, the first years of the business are usually a motherfucker. Uh, people will lie to you. You'll find out things aren't the way they are. You just learn so much those first few years. If you can weather that and stick to it, you will make money. How much? I don't know, but you will make money because most people <laughs> tap out. As soon as those trials and tribulations start mounting, because sometimes you'll get hit with six, seven, eight, nine, ten of them all at once. It'd be like <laughs> you feel like you in the ring with with, uh, you know, Muhammad Ali in the 60s. You know, you're just like, wait a minute. I just I'm wait a minute. Hell, hold on. I mean, seriously, a lot of times it just comes in clusters. It's not like here's one problem. No, it's like one problem. And this leads to another problem. And next thing you know, chaotic theory has enhanced your ass with catastrophe and you've got to figure that stuff out and you don't have a lot of time to figure that stuff out so it will build you 
Now, I will say if you want to get into the investing and you become a really good investor from the old school, that's why I recommend Peter Lynch's books, all of his old stuff, you know, before 2000, because they were the core was looking at how a business performed. And you can reverse engineer how a business performs. Like there, because there's businesses that are doing great, but because they don't meet market uh, expectations, they get punished on the stock price. But if you learn how to study the business, you find out the business is solid. I give you what? Oh, you can't buy their stock. Only employees can get it. Waffle House, solid as hell. No, hardly any debt. Cash every day. Staple. I mean, it's just not going anywhere. You, you know, you got to be on the inside to get that stock. Uh, learn how what makes a business profitable. That's why a lot of Allen lists in Wall Street, the ones who are really good, go off and start businesses because they know what makes a business profitable or they become part of a startup or something or they invest in certain things because they know what makes a business profitable. And that's one valuable lesson you can learn from investing. It can happen. But I don't know, the whole investing thing is also takes discipline. It also takes living below your income. It's just it's so many parallels to being a super successful investor to being a successful business owner. There's just so many parallels. Oh, so if you can do one, you could probably do both. But once again, for me, I'm just not interested in it anymore because, and I will admit, I'm coming from a lofty position. I know that one book, one well-written book can go on forever. There are certain books, if you go to Amazon's top 1,000, you'll see a lot of old books that have been selling for decades. The author's dead and the family's getting all those royalties. Decades. And that's the whole thing. That's one of the reasons I create so much content because I am, you know, this is like the Star Trek thing. This is a great parallel. I bought 1,500 shared, let's just say 2,000 plus units in my storage auction lifetime. Out of the 2,000 plus units, there was maybe 38 to 45 that were remarkable. I mean, just like, oh, not even a percentage point. But if I hadn't bought that many units, I wouldn't have got the 38. And that's how I look at it with the creation of content, the creation of courses. The more that I create, the more that I put out there, you know, my own thing, massive action, that one's just going to hit. And I'll be like, yeah, 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 come to daddy. And that, that's the whole thing. So you got a choice in this world today. You can build a perpetual business. You can build one <laughs> that doesn't take a lot of employees. Uber has 2,000 employees and the market cap of 50 billion. Delta has 80,000 employees and market cap of 38 billion. Now, whose who's balance sheet looks better? Invariably, it's Uber's because they've got less organic um, line items on, on the transaction sheet. It's just better. Just, just cash is... It's just a whirlwind of cash. Airbnb, same thing. So these are the things you just... If you are... If you get over yourself and if you stop asking for permission to be successful, because when you send me these questions, what I should invest in, you're saying, I don't trust my own judgment. Or you're saying, I didn't do my research. And if I did do my research, I still don't trust my own judgment. And the best way for you to learn how to trust your own judgment is to fuck up. You fuck up enough times, you're going to get to the point where you're going to get it right. And you're going to be like, oh, you start to trust it. You start to trust that intuition. But as long as you do not expose yourself or put anything out there, you don't get those lessons. So those are my thoughts. Hands down, if you are... A rough and rugged, start a business. If you know you lazy as fuck, go ahead and invest. That's what I think you should do. That's where I think you should be. That's the thing I think you should hit. So with that, if you like the content of this video, and you should, and you need more help, go below the video, get yourself on one of those lists, and I'll see you in the next session.